hey, stop trying to prove that they are wrong and you are right. Okay? I'll, that's, that's the message for today. Stop trying to prove that you're right and they're wrong. Okay? Especially when it comes to your faith. So, I just took a note. And it blessed me so much when I was reading this. When you examine Jesus' life, you see that he was faced with a lot of kickback. <laughs> he had the Pharisees. He had the Sadducees. He had, you know, his family that didn't believe, didn't accept him as a prophet. Um, didn't, you know, it was just so much that Jesus went through. He had to face the devil, right? He was tempted while he was went on into the wilderness to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And... I just want to take a note that Jesus never tried to prove himself. He never tried to prove himself to the enemy. Okay. He only spoke the truth. That was it. He spoke the truth. If you go back and you read, you will see what I'm talking about. And so in Luke 4, 3 through 13, Jesus is being tempted. He is in the wilderness being tempted. The devil comes down. He starts challenging him and telling him, you know, um, if you're, you know, if you're the son of man, then throw yourself off this mountain and, you know, the angels will come and you, you, if the Bible says that you should, you ain't going to strike, uh, strike your foot against the stone. And you know what Jesus response was that the word of God, that the word says that thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. Right. <laughs> and I'm just flipping to the pages because I want to um, I just want to quote things correctly. Yeah. So here the devil go. And he's like, if you're the son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. Right. He's fasting. Right. He's, he's not eating anything. Right. But Jesus told him, no. OK. Resist the devil and he will what? Flee. Okay, no. The scriptures say people do not live by bread alone. Then the devil took him up, revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them. Right? He said, because they are mine to give anyone I please. I will give it all to you if you worship me. What did you, okay, so Jesus said, the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and only serve him. So I just want you to notice, I just want you to notice that each time the enemy came to try to get Jesus to fall, Jesus only responded with the truth. He didn't argue with him about what, what the scripture said. Because sometimes people like to misinterpret scripture to use it for what they want it to say, to justify their actions. And what the job of the enemy is, or what he's what he does, I should say, is he does the same thing. He takes the scripture to mean what he wants it to mean. And it's this it's called deception, right? And so although the scripture says what it says, it does not mean what he's saying it means. And all Jesus did was speak the truth. And so <laughs> the thing is that's so amazing about this is all throughout the New Testament, he never argued with anybody about the word of God. Never. If they chose not to believe what he said, he simply just, he, he left. He just walked away. In fact, he told the disciples, if they don't receive your word, dust off your feet, baby, go. You are free to leave. You do not have to force the word of God on nobody because it's not our job. One of the things that when I was coming to know God for myself and I was growing deeper in my relationship with him, um, I had a hard time with, understanding how to share the word of God. Like when people say like, you go out and spread the good news and talk to people about Jesus and win souls for Christ and you know, all of that stuff, making disciples. And I'm just like, you expect for me just to walk up to somebody randomly and 
you know, share the word of God and talk about, and then, then they may be trying to argue with me and telling me, you know, cause I don't know the whole Bible and I, I don't know that much. It's like how I'm going to have something to say back. Like, you know, and it's like, relax because it really isn't that hard. First of all, all you need to do <laughs> is just share your testimony. Like I had overcomplicated this whole process in my head. And I think that a lot of us do that, especially when you first come to know Christ and you are, uh, um, you are going deeper in your relationship with Christ. And it's like, okay, so how do I now go out and share the word of God? Some of us, we don't have an issue. Like I know people that are like, they, they, they are, bing, they run off because they're people, for people, like they love people. So they just, but anyways, I, I'm talking to the people that don't necessarily just like talking to people that they don't know like that. <laughs> um, Jesus is our example on how to handle those difficult conversations that we had, that we may have with people. The only thing that the easiest thing that you can do is share your testimony with somebody because what they can't take away from you is what God did for you. This is your experience. So you're sharing what you have experienced. You share your experience with God, with Jesus. That's what you do. Your job is not to argue with anybody about the word of God, not even another believer. Period. Your job is to speak the truth. And the job of the Holy Spirit would then be to open their eyes so that they can see and their mind to understand. See, in the scripture, it talks of Jesus talks about himself that some people he's he taught in parables because some people are not going to understand their minds have been shut. So Jesus even says in the scripture, the reason why he spoke in parables is because there are only certain people are permitted to hear to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God. So even as I talk right now, not everybody is going to understand what I'm saying. And that's because your ears have not been open. The job of the Holy Spirit is to open your ears and your eyes to understand spiritually what you cannot comprehend. The kingdom of God does not make sense to people who are not a part of the kingdom of God. Okay. And so in the, in the text, um, Matthew chapter 13, God is, Jesus is saying that, okay, where do I want to start? Chapter 13, verse 10. The disciples came and asked him, why do you use parables when you talk to people? He replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. That That is why I use parables. For they look, but they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. This fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says, when you hear what I say, you will not understand. And when you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the heart of these people are hardened and their ears cannot hear. And they have closed their eyes, so their eyes cannot see and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. So just that in itself should tell you that when you are trying to share what God has done for you, when you are talking about God in the scripture and you're trying to, you know, just be a light, you got to know that not everybody is going to understand what you are saying. There are certain people that will hear your message and they will understand it. There's another passage in the Bible that talks about that. Um, of course, God, uh, Jesus, God says, my sheep know my voice. <laughs> um, I think Paul also talks about that when we preach, the people that are with us will understand, but the people who are not with us won't. So the point that I'm trying to make to you is that don't try to prove that you're right and somebody else is wrong. Don't even waste your energy on that. Even when it doesn't have to do with scripture, with Bible, with Christ, with your belief in your faith. I had a moment in my life where I had to learn that I could not continue to try to defend myself. 
right? I didn't like what I mean is like somebody is spewing out lies about me. Somebody is telling all of these things that are not true. And it's like, I need people to know that this person is lying. That's not my job. You know why? Because the truth always comes to the light. And I serve a God that is the God of justice. And so, you know what? Even though they want to lie on me, they want to say that I did all this different kind of stuff. It's like, I'm going to just keep being who I am. I'm going to keep letting my light shine. I'm going to keep doing what God tells me to do. I'm going to trust God with this situation. So when I say that God is, is my advocate, that Jesus is my advocate, that, that he's my lawyer in the courtroom, I don't say that just because it sounds cute. No, I stood in court and I didn't have to say much but a nothing. I didn't have to say many words at all. And the judge saw favor. Like the judge gave me favor because the situation, she could see right through it. But what I'm trying to say is that God gave her eyes to see and understand and to understand the situation. I didn't have to fight to prove that I was right about anything because God did it for me. You do what you're supposed to do. The Bible says that God will not withhold any good thing for those that do what is right. Are you doing what's right? <laughs> so anyways, the point of this is that just stop trying to prove that you're right, okay? It's not even worth your time, energy. It really ain't, especially when it comes to the word of God. We're not arguing about the word of God. We can talk about it to bring context. And that's the other thing is that you need to be able to discern the people that are coming to just stir up drama like they don't have no, they don't want to understand. They don't want to understand nothing. They're just coming up in here to stir the pot. It's a lot of those people out here. But then there are others that genuinely don't understand and they're looking for understanding. Those are the people that you can actually tell something to and they will listen to understand and not listen to argue. We don't argue about the word of God, okay? So that's all I want to say. Be encouraged and don't be afraid to share your story. Don't be afraid to share your light for others to see. Um, encourage you to do so. And the best way you can do that is start by sharing your testimony and what God has done for you. You don't have to know the whole book of the Bible. You don't have to know where every verse in the Bible comes from to share his good news, to share who Jesus Christ is and who He what he did for you. That intimidated me. I don't know where every scripture in the Bible is, but the more you study the word of God and the closer you get with him, I guarantee you, you'll be able to reference where those scriptures are. But don't let that intimidate you that you can't spit out, you know, Bible verses left and right. Okay. All right. So that's all I got. Be blessed.